Well, good morning, guys, and welcome to the show. Today we have another car that we get to hear. This one, well, this one has taken us a while to hear. We've actually been to four shows and, and have missed it every time because we've been so busy. But today, I'm excited that we get to do this. One of the best sounding cars, according to everyone I've talked to, that has been in the Knowledge Fest scene in a very long time. Let's head over there, talk to a close friend of mine and a big friend of the show, Dougie Fresh. Doug, what's happening? <laughs> Glad to see you finally made it. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> anyways, uh, we've been trying to film this car now for four different events. It's like six months into the year. We started in February. <laughs> the stars have never aligned, and even this morning, they were trying very hard yeah, to make we sure got that it. we didn't. What a good. Yeah. So um, welcome. <laughs> Let's just get through this so that we don't get interrupted like 10 more times. What, what, what are we looking at? What did you build here today? Well, this is uh, the newest version of my 2018 Audi Q5. Pretty basic setup. Uh, <laughs> You're joking. You're funny. No, it's basic. Okay. The, the last one I didn't even get to use as a vehicle because the whole hatch was taken up. So this time, everything's in the floor. Bing would love it. To me, it was basic, and it was supposed to be a lot more advanced, but it worked out so darn well, I just stopped where I was. Everything's at the floor level or below. I started Nav TV Zen, where the factory amplifier was, to turn it into uh, fiber optic to go over to our ground zero DSP that's in the other side. And that sends a signal down, because that works really smoothly there. <laughs> Ground zero DSP on this side, and then that sends signal down to my amplifiers. Right now, it shows four amplifiers. I'm using three of them. These are the Ground Zero Uranium amplifiers. The four channel is driving a set of Ground Zero Uranium tweeters and mid-range. And I use a dome mid-range, because it's a really, really cool speaker. Uh, I've got a two-channel amplifier running the mid bases in the doors. I've got a two channel running the dual voice coil shallow sub. That's a three and five eighths inch deep, 0.8 cubic feet of enclosure. Is that uh, just one sub? One sub. How, so, how big is the box? 0.8 cubic feet net. Wow. 1.01, 1. something like that, uh, uh, gross. The vent starts here, ends up here right next to the battery. And I have a fourth amplifier and it was a four channel that I was going to use for center channel and stuff as we grew our DSP line. It turned out sounding so good, I'm not gonna do that. I'm not gonna mess with what I've got here. <laughs> I'm probably gonna swap out that for another two channel, bridge them both down so I can drive the sub even harder because right now it's only getting 500 watts. It's still enough to make me happy, but a thousand's always gonna be better. Yes, more power for sure. More, <laughs> more of more. More of more. I can't just have stuff sitting there. So we welded up some amp racks and mount to each side on the subframe where the trailer hitch mounts. So they're half inch bolts. Well, they're not half inch because it's metric because it's Audi. Bolted to each side, cantilevered over because the amplifiers are pretty heavy, but I wanted them to float as much as I could. Unfortunately, we did it to such tight tolerances that uh, the newest version of the uranium amplifiers are one millimeter taller than the old ones and I can't put them on the bottom locations because it's just that tight. But the amplifiers slide in, each one mounts with one bolt, so it's super easy to get to uh, if I want to do anything. And about the only thing I would really do is get underneath because you can adjust the, uh, the A bias on the amplifiers, but it's on the bottom. So um, as it is, it's all turned all the way up on anything that uh, we listen to. Threw this together in my driveway getting ready for K-Fest Las Vegas this year. I used what I had, but came up with something pretty cool. It didn't have enough flash, so I went over and saw my buddy Jared Bali, and uh, we whipped together a little floor piece to highlight the Ground Zero logo, tie the wood trim into the wood trim in the rest of the vehicle, and uh, kind of brings it all together. Can we hear it? No, I don't have time. <laughs> <laughs> so with all that power and the three-way set up front, did this come with a three-way set? This came with a stupid amount. This was 19 speakers from the factory. Really? Yeah, factory tweeters up high, oh. down low, uh, three inch mid range here, three inch mid range here, four by six woofers in the door. Really? Yeah. Oh, that must Guess have, why I got rid of it. Must have <laughs> pounded. But I see you You have that now. I do. So those two locations weren't, weren't working for you? Well, this one, I didn't like the sound of. So when we first built this vehicle, friend Tom Miller designed little pods that we created up here, with several layers of uh, acrylic. Let's pop the cover off. I just had to remake these to fit the domes in. Domes are cool. Well, 
I I hesitated. I'll be honest. Oh yeah. I built it with uh, the 80 millimeter cone mid, and these I I had to change the angle quite a bit uh, to get it right on axis with the uh, opposite. Yes, uh, I opposite feel like seat. there's this giant deep black eye staring at my face. Well, it kind of is that. Um, <laughs> But then trying to get the grills behind the grill, it was complex because it looked so perfect the way Tom originally designed it that I wasn't going to go outside of that parameter. And these are 0 .050 inches deeper than the old ones. So I got pretty close. I mean, I don't know. Tom might be like, bro, really? <laughs> Interestingly, we got the whole thing done, driving home, and that's when I realized where that, the shape of my the original sub enclosure my speaker grills down in the doors these speakers he, he just tied the factory location in to make it look like everything else we did but it's my rearview mirror that kind of dictated everything oh wow yeah that's that, that, that was yeah. the whole install yeah yeah that's that stuff Tom would pick up on so we used the factory mount for the tweeter just little brackets to tie to it so 28 millimeter tweeter in the lower factory location this one's empty so this is just strictly front stage Front stage only. Now, is there is the rear plane at all, or are we just nope, they're there, gone? There's nothing there at all. Uh, I put speakers in. Again, my original intent: center channel, rears, and effect channels with the more advanced DSP. But uh, it sounds so good. I'm not. Uh, I'm not going to do any of that. And to the point that most people sit in here and go, "Man, that center channel that blends in really well." So I keep a Ground Zero catalog right on top of it, so it's obvious that the thing is not plane <laughs> yeah well you know it's funny you say that because one of the things that that i like is when i when i get a car done and there was a center channel and we won't talk about how i feel about retain i wish we could retain it but more and more manufacturers need to get their well that's well that's a tangent i don't want to go down hey, but if they do it well i'll retain it yeah well i mean i'm an aftermarket guy we oh. won't like we don't i don't want to have that conversation because <laughs> take oh, away <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> i feel it's kind of nice because it, it it gives the illusion that it's there and that grill helps to pull their oh yeah their brain towards it and then they're always like i don't remember paying for a center channel and you're like you didn't yeah oh, oh wow years ago when i asked a competition one of the cars they built they kept telling them you need a stronger center you need to put it center speaker in there and so we popped the dash out cut a hole in it made a grill up popped it in there left it empty and the next show suddenly that center channel was strong as can be the mind does some pretty amazing things yes it does <laughs> good and or bad welcome to the 12 volt industry <laughs> yay as you said this thing sounds amazing i've been waiting for months to hear this and even though i've had the opportunity i'm like nope no, no, I want to wait. I want to wait. I want to. I want to be fresh ears and and not be like, oh, dude, I've heard this is so great. You guys, are, I don't want to do that. So I've been waiting six months to hear this thing. I know that means nothing to you guys, but let's sit back, relax, and listen to some DRM free music, and I'll tell you what I think. start with that is the best sounding ground zero magazine <laughs> i have ever heard i mean that the that thing dude they should just sell those just set it right up on the dash and it's it, way better than last year's catalog yeah that, that catalog sounds <laughs> freaking awesome i mean yes it, it, it i understand now it's like it the center is locked in and like the guitar it, it's off center when he's playing the guitar and so it's like you could hear him. It was almost like he was a little miniature guy sitting up here on top of the dash, strumming along, and uh, yeah, so, uh, the tweeters are soft dome, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, that's it's it, dude. Yeah, 
I'm a big Dome fan. So, and I, and I love Silk Soft Dome, and it's just, it's so, so, so natural sounding. Like, when he was plucking, it was like... There are a lot of things that uh, I keep hearing people go, what was that? Was like, that was her tongue on the back of her teeth as she started to say that. Whoa! Let's go back. Let's hear that again. Some super resolution in this. But there again, variable bias. Bias turned all the way up. Those amps are back there going, hey, look at me. I'm going to suck up all my battery voltage. And uh, Kind of handy having a power supply plugged in. It is handy <laughs> having a power supply plugged in for sure. Um, this thing sounds awesome, guys. And, and everyone has told me it has. And I was not disappointed for sure. I'm super excited that we got to finally do this it, it it's amazing the mid bass is great the upfront bass which is the single 10 um it has great bass response which you just heard for just a single 10 um i grant you know it's not back you know like smacking the back of my head off but we weren't really trying to do that but now that we're done with this video we're gonna smack the back oh of are head. we okay yeah, yeah no we're gonna so you guys got to hear the drm stuff i'm gonna sit back relax and hear his playlist of what i should be actually listening to but and listen to my three bands of EQ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Three bands of parametric EQ. Graphic. Three bands of graphic EQ. That's all I used. Yeah? <laughs> it's just three bands. Six dB total. Have you talked to Jeff about that? He, he, he used one band and one speaker. I could take it out and most people wouldn't notice. The interesting thing, one of the bands was there from something I did before and it, it has to be something with phase, but it just works. One of them is completely out of the pass band. It's at 250 hertz on the mids, and the mids play 400 hertz up. Okay. Oh, so it's just an anomaly. It's, it's whatever. Nick Wingate found that when he goes, man, there's something out of this voice that's just not quite there, and did that, and he's like, yep, right there. It's not even on the speakers, but it does something. And, well, it's there. And Brian Mitchell yeah. found the other one at 40 hertz. So I could see that. They've, uh, but he got excited. Oh. <laughs> oh, it was. <laughs> it, uh, it, it's really cool having uh, great friends in, uh, in the industry that'll... They have their despite, names on a few trophies. Dis despite the fact that, you know, in theory we're competitors, um, yeah, that's not the case. No, not at all. No, no, not with us. I mean... Anyways, enough of the reminiscing. You guys don't, you know, it's wow. <laughs> we'll talk two, all day. Two old guys in a car. <laughs> one, two, one, two. Oh, um, dominating fresh. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's that Dougie. All right, guys. Thank you so much for listening to this. This Ground Zero system is killing it. You guys have seen us review Ground Zero before. This did not disappoint. What series is this again? Uranium for everything except for the shallow sub is a hydrogen. There you go. Thank you so much for finally making this happen it is all my fault you guys have a great day as always we'll see you later next time have Bye. a good day